What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the fifth studio album by former Disney star Demi Lovato. The new album is titled Confident, a two-year gap in between records. The semi-self-titled record, which I actually had mainly positive things to say about, dropped in 2013, included the lead single Heart Attack and the misfire made in the USA. Now, if you haven't done so already, go like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos or sometimes I have text reviews that come out considering I just did a review of the state champs record that a lot of you guys were requesting in text form on my blog. Now like I was saying with that last album Demi, I definitely do think there were a lot of strong pop songs on there, a lot of good pop rock rhythms and of course the strong voice of Miss Lovato herself. And on Confident, her new record, I definitely do think her raw vocal talent is what guides a lot of this record once again. That's what's at the heart of this thing and is holding everything together, albeit with a few modifications to her voice here and there and a totally new sound to kind of back those pipes up. If you're out to argue her skill as a vocalist on this record, <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there. You're, you're wrong. You lose. Lovato has one of the strongest, if not the strongest voice in mainstream pop music these days, soaring high over cuts like For You and The Ballad Father. Now, if your point is that the production choices were a little bit hit and miss, a few misfires on this thing, maybe I'd be a little bit more inclined to agree with you. Now, as showcased with the sizzling lead single Cool for the Summer, electronic leaning pop definitely rules confident, often lacing together these roaring, danceable synthesizers and booming bass that when combined correctly, actually make for some really fun pop songs. Now, the problems actually start to arise on this LP whenever the producers, for whatever reason, decide to throw on EDM and watered-down electronic beats that just make her sound like a featured guest on her own album. I'm looking at you, Kingdom Come. Speaking of that song, why do we have to be exposed to Iggy Azalea's awful out-of-place rapping on this track? I mean, I'll admit that this song does have strength in its verses, and then the chorus and drop occasionally get stuck in my head, but then Iggy comes on the track with some god-awful bars about television shows from the 90s, Family Matters, talking about the Olsen twins from Full House, and then just somehow sort of sealing it all up with something about a kingdom, like she meant to throw it all together. I mean, she has a few lines here and there that actually do kind of stick with the choices and the themes of the song, but overall it just feels like Wiz Khalifa coming on payphone for Maroon 5. It makes no sense, they're just throwing together words that sound nice, it's just another pop rap feature for the trash. While I'm getting a few of my complaints out of the way, let's talk about how generic and forced the track Wildfire is. I mean, I like some of the cuts on this record. I really do. There's a nice variety here. I, I like some of the stuff. I really do. But then Wildfire comes on. It's just so painfully cliched, even right down to its core. The instrumentals, even Demi feels stiff and lifeless on this track and her vocals. I don't even think the ballad Father feels that strong. It doesn't really strike the same chord as some of the other tracks that she's actually written about her dad. I mean, I'm glad she's moving on. I'm glad that she's over it. She's forgiven him and she's hoping that he gets a second chance up in heaven. But at the same time, uh, I look at the power ballad that comes earlier in the track listing, Stone Cold, and I just see it doing it so much better. And it's like, why would I even bother listening to Father when I have a better one on this same album? Stone Cold is so much more effective. You can feel the chills just kind of shooting in on this soulful leaning track. We see the singer actually here kind of battling with a love that she can't quite have. It's maybe a familiar topic but at the same time, her voice is so strong on this track, it kind of outweighs maybe some of the lyrical cliches. Lovato's voice knocks it out of the damn park on this one, there's no question about it, as she's backed mainly by light percussion and a piano lead on the hook of this thing. Also really caught my attention on the bridge of the track with just some of those soaring pipes. It's just, you hear her hitting these notes, you know she's capable of it, but it's still impressive each time you listen. Games of the Heart and Mind pop up again on the track Old Ways, but with a much fiercer tone this time around. There's an effective build-up and drop here on this track, and I don't think it's quite as solid as some of the other moments that we're going to get to in just a minute on this album, but still, I like how they kind of show restraint in the verses and then more of a payoff once the chorus rolls around. I am not a fan of the pitched town vocals, not by any means, the ones that appear near the end of this track, but I suppose it doesn't really kill the song for me. I think the main reason that Demi Lovato's love life is actually in question is the one that everyone's buzzing about, 
Cool for the Summer. The lead single definitely had some things that could be questioned, I mean, but it's pretty obvious what she's hinting at. She's saying things like she's curious and talking about the cherry just needs a taste and stuff like that. It's like basically beating you over the head with it without really doing so. And the fact is, it doesn't really matter. I think that that kind of almost overshadowed the song and the success that it saw. I mean, it did hit number 11, but it kind of faded out quickly as the summer left. And that's a shame because I thought this was a pretty strong pop tune that definitely grew on me with repeated listens. I love the kind of darkness. There's a weird vibe going on here that I've never really heard in a Demi Lovato song before. The guitars sound nice here and kind of loud and fierce, unexpected. The production choices here definitely made this a very up-tempo and kind of powering tune that I just didn't really see coming. So it's definitely something, like I said, that's grown on me. The album's best moment comes in the track For You, flying high on its massive chorus and the towering vocals from Lovato. And I have to point out, I love the echoes on this thing and of course the backing vocals that just kind of shadow her voice during the hook, adding even more to this song's irresistible charisma. I seriously did not expect anything this great to come out of this album, or really from a pop album in general these days. It reminds me a little bit of the strength of Kelly Clarkson, maybe the little winning streak that pop music in general went on in the mid-2000s. It just shows off her vocals, but at the same time it's got this dancing synth line on it, especially during the chorus. I love that. It mixes in with some programmed drums and a little bit more restraint and then payoff. Uh, I know that's something that's definitely familiar, but at the same time it's done in such a way that it lures you in and back for repeated listens. There's aspects of some of the other songs that I actually do like, such as the darker vibe of Waiting For You and the strong spirit of Lionheart, but I can't really help but feel like there's a lot of filler in the back half compared to the first five Five songs on this album just really carrying the torch, really just back to back to back, a bunch of enjoyable content. But then we get to things like Cy Ra's verse on Waiting For You, he's a rapper, and then once again we just have the same thing that we keep running into, I'm running into a brick wall here. I don't know if maybe somebody out there can answer this question for me, but why do pop singers and their writers and producers keep feeling the need to invite rappers onto these songs that are just so ill-fitting for them and just have poorly executed verses? It's just nonsense. Anyways, the final moments on this thing before I go that I actually wanted to mention. There's two of them, the first of those being Yes. Demi actually sounds really smart and poignant here over this R&B flavored jam that has a smashing hook and an instrumental that combines both old and new styles of music. Also have to give a shout to the badass title track. Did not see this thing coming. I get this picture of like a marching band playing it because there's trumpets, there's these stomping drum rhythms here, and it just really actually exudes confidence. I think that's exactly what she was going for with this album and just in general, it, I don't know, it feels like something I would hear before the kickoff at a high school football game, or maybe even something bigger than that, maybe an NFL game. Lovato has her confidence back, and I think on the good portion of this album, she actually shows us the best of what she's got up her sleeve. Sure, there's definitely some improvements that can be done across the board. I didn't care for some of the production choices. Like I said, a little bit of a hit and miss type scenario going on. But as a whole, I'm confident that this album is getting a 3.5 from me. Anyone? Anyone? No. Thanks so much for watching my review of Demi Lovato's album, Confident. If you would like to check out my second channel, you can click right here. I do music reviews over there, too, in the form of track reviews, talk about music news, stuff like that. You can click right here to go to my last review that I did on this channel. Don't forget to smash the like button while you're here to let me know that you enjoyed this review. Maybe subscribe to the channel, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. If there's other albums you'd like to see me talk about, let me know with a comment. Other than that, I'll see you very soon, right here on ARTV.